Welcome to part number two of the detailed look into my Space Jam BrainFuck interpreter and today I'm going to show you the memory subsystem. It handles the operations of going to the next and the previous memory cells and for each I have prepared a short program to show. First I'm going to show you how to go to the next memory cell and the program does this once in this beginning and then goes back to memory cell 0 and then I have an input which I'll use as a jump point to fast forward to. And then we will repeat the command of going to the next cell twice and we'll look at each. The memory subsystem consists of these three reactors on the right side. Beginning with this upper reactor in the execution line who passes down data to the second reactor which is in line with the third reactor which in turn goes back in a circle to reactor number one. Built around the second reactor there's a circle of pipes coming back into it and this is where I store the memory and in it I only store the memory I have already used. During execution the data item that I'm currently looking at can be found in this upper row and when I want to go to the next one I pass it through this reactor to the second one and it's entered here and becoming the previous one and the next one which becomes the current one is taken from the input line and then pass back through the reactor 3 and reactor 1 into the normal execution line. When I'm going to the previous item it becomes a little bit more tricky because I need to get the one which was entered the last into this queue. And finally since I only store the parts of memory that I have already visited in this queue I need a way to handle what happens when I go to another part where I have not been before. To do that I use a token which I have already mentioned in part number one which I will show you will be stored in reactor number two. Here it is after I have processed my program and it will now go from reactor number three to reactor number one and back to reactor number two. And there it will be stored at the bottom. It will now stay in this reactor at this place and you can think of this position as an extension of the income line so I can basically, if that part is free, put an item just here without going through the whole queue. You will see the reason for that soon. Now let's run the program, we'll fast forward to the input command and after that we'll look at how it works. We have now already visited the memory cell number 2 which is now stored at the next position here in reactor number 2. And beyond it you can find the memory end token. To distinguish the two memory cells I will set the current one which is cell number 1 with which we started to a different value and then we will go to the next memory cell which will happen now after we reassemble this. And here you can see the command coming in. This is the first memory reactor. It will recognize the command and the blue wall will take the incoming data item and give it down to the reactor number 2. For reactor number 2 an incoming data item represents the command to get the next data item. So we just give the old one out to the queue and we take the one on the next position and give it out to reactor number 3 and then we fill the next position with the next one in the queue and reactor number 3 takes the incoming data item and gives it back to reactor number 1 where it is put back into the execution line again. Now we will execute this command once more but this time we are at the end of our stored memory and we will go to a memory position which we have not visited before. So in the reactor number 2 you can see the memory storage end token on the next position. The memory item will just come in and we will give out the token. And reactor number 3 will handle this. And it will give out a new memory item with the token. And then in reactor number 1, which will take both, the memory end token is given back to reactor number 2. And the data item is 
the new one, the current one, and give them back into the execution line. And the memory end token is now put back into the next position. And this is the reason why I needed to have this possible to enter at this side of the queue just one item. Now I will show you how to go back to a previous memory cell and the program for this just fills the first three memory cells with their position as value and then goes back to cell number one and we will skip to this operation of going back one cell. Which takes quite a while because it is really 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 slow. Okay, here it starts. Instead of only giving down the data item to reactor number 2, I now give down the command first and after that the data item. And the reactor number 2 will see this command and know now it's time to get the previous item. And for this it will take this command and put it into the queue and it will now be abused as a token. And as you can see, you can now find the token just one place behind the item which we want to get, which is the item previous to this one which will now enter the queue. And the reactor number two will now run through these two loops and always will look one item ahead of the one that's currently handled. And if we see this token, we know that the item that we currently have here at the blue wall is the one which we were looking for. And it's passed again through reactor number 3. And reactor number 1 takes back the command and the incoming data item. I skipped ahead to the last command which is the same command again so we will see it once more. And we are currently at memory position number 2, which you can see as this value. And on the next position you can see the value 3. And here comes in our token. And the data item of which we want to have the previous one. And since we don't find the token we will just give all these items back into the queue and they will stay in their order as they were. And there is the token and we can have our item with a value 1. And here we are back in reactor number one. And we have now got our previous item and finished the program. That was what I wanted to show you in part number two. I hope you were able to understand everything. But anyway, if you have questions, just ask them in the comments and I will see to answer them as best as I can and I hope to see you soon when I have finished part number three where I will talk about the flow control which is the last remaining thing of the detailed explanations. Bye bye!